All right, guys, we are back with our fourth podcast. This is podcast number four, four of many. And today we got a special guest with us. Uh, we have our friend Tomahawk. He is the man, the myth, the legend from O Canada A, the guild. Uh, and I'm actually a part of the guild as well. I'm, I am an officer in the, in the discord and all that stuff. And actually we've been talking quite a bit. He's a really, really, really good guy. I actually want to ask you a few questions, uh, about things, but before we get in there, I want you to introduce yourself and, uh, what's new and exciting this week. What's going on? Hey, what's up? Uh, my name's Tomahawk. Uh, you've probably be seen me or heard of me. I'm not super, um, active in for say in the guild of guardian discord. That's only cause I'm building in a background. As an ambassador, uh, I've received a grant also for uh, what I'm building currently in the sandbox. Um, yeah, and also O Canada A, like Capone said, I'm building a Canadian community here uh, with obviously members from all over the world. And that's taking up a lot of time and is super fun and meeting like really awesome people. Um, yeah, so that's, you know, my week has, I have a full time job. I'm a government employee here in Canada, mm -hmm. but I would say that what I'm doing as an ambassador and and promoting Guild of Guardians is takes as much time, if not right. more, as my full time job. But is as is uh, also something I love doing. So right, it it feel it doesn't feel like it's taking time. It just feels like I'm having fun, meeting new people, talking about you know GOG, which is amazing, and trying to speculate like you guys do every week. Right, and that's the thing. It's like people don't realize you know because uh, you know you're running the guild and you have your own stuff. You have your, you know you have a full time job as well. I don't think people un realize how hard it is to run a community. Like when you're especially when you're the one running it, there's a lot more work. You know, people some people think you might just open it up people jump in and it takes care of itself no there's a lot of work that goes in it so i do want to get into that a little bit i just want to say uh before we do that wt what's new ya beauty how is your week what's going on what's new and exciting you guys know wt we do this every week what's going on you beaut what's going on hey guys how we doing you guys are beauts also <laughs> i love that word now I, i've never used that word before now i use it all the time i'm, I'm not trying to take your uh, no man you're your, uh, you you know, do your just, you got it. <laughs> got me addicted. But uh, yeah, just uh, you guys know me, staying busy, doing all kinds of things. I've got some uh, personal stuff coming up in my life that's going to be really challenging for me. And I'm trying to still maintain everything. And Tomahawk, thanks for joining us. And yes, I used to be a former guild leader for about three years. I know exactly how challenging it is. Just because the game is off does not mean you're not getting all kinds of DMs from Lord knows how many people of all these little things they need or possible dramas popping up. So my hat's off to you, sir, for taking on that challenge. It's a huge responsibility, one that I do not want ever again. Right. That's the thing. Like I've, uh, you know, I've been involved with, with uh, guilds in the past as well. I'm a full time Twitch streamer, so I have my own community going and same thing. You know, it's like when the stream's off the community isn't shut shut off the community continues so it's you know there's dms all the time and people want help with this and need that and there's always questions there's always things going on so i agree there's it, it's there's never a downtime uh, i'm answering dms at two three in the morning you know what i mean so that's just the way it is so speaking of uh, o canada a and and you said you know it's a canadian based guild but anybody can join in the world around the world so i have a question for you why why if so it's not a canadian it, it's a canadian based build but it's a guild but it's not canadian only so uh, I, first of all, I love the name. I think it's a phenomenal name. I love it. I'm Canadian as, as well. Not only that, you actually live down the road from me. You live literally two minutes down the road from me. What are the chances of that? Such a small world. Not only do we, we, I mean, we never met each other. We didn't know each other. Uh, we both start playing Gilded Guardians. It's like, oh, I live here. And it's like, wait a minute. What do you mean you live here? I live here. Oh, well, I live in this area. Well, what are you talking about? I literally live off the same street. So we're two minutes down the road from each other. What, what a small, small world. Um, wow. So, yeah, isn't that crazy? So uh, my question basically, why why O Canada A if, if you're open up to the world? Don't you think that might leave some confusion to some people saying, oh, well, I'm not Canadian. I can play. When in reality, everybody's invited. But I love the name. But I want to ask... Uh, so what's the story behind it? So when I first started um, looking into GOG and I, you know, I decided that this is going to be the project I want to be in, um, my vision was a lot smaller. It was basically I wanted to buy the warrior token because there's only going to be 200 and I wanted to have a, be a step above the 2000 uh, adventurer that there may be more of. So just in the just to be like have a little you know be a, a bit above everyone else in the kind of leaderboard I was like okay 
maybe it would be cool. And it, it's, it was also a lot more money to put down versus the adventure, but it's also like putting your trust in the project. So I saw it more as, as an investment that way. Um, so yeah, so I got the 30 and my idea was, let's just make, you know, a guild with 30 people and let's, you know, oh, Canada A sounds good. Canadian identity with that. Perfect. But then I started, you know, getting more into the uh, GOG community and I act absolutely loved it. And, you know, I, I uh, applied to be an ambassador uh, and then I got in as an ambassador and then nice. I applied for a grant and this and that. So I'm super involved now. And now it's not just about being your little group of 30 friends that played playing the game. It's really about being an ambassador for this really awesome upcoming game and promoting that to the whole world. I mean, GOG is realistically looking at having 50 million people after one year. What does that mean? Yeah, and I, that and I, means that. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, sorry. That means that all of us have to, you know, do our part as ambassadors to put some content out there to, you know, get the word out. Uh, obviously, uh, their plan for onboarding is is going to be a free to play game. Mm -hmm. So all these people, it has to be geared toward free to play because that's how you're going to get your 50 million people. It's not the people buying the legendaries, Absolutely. buying the epics right now. No, it's those people coming in later, coming in after the game launches that are started off with maybe less or nothing, starting from common, working their way up. And after a few months, who knows, they may be just be as competitive as anyone that bought sure. any kind of to of uh, founders NFT. I, I agree. That's and that's how I see it. I agree. And, and that's why I love like when WT has the, uh, the price list. I'm always surprised to see it because there's only so many pets out there. There's only so many heroes out there. They're talking 50 now, 50 million is a lot of people. I mean, you know, it's a lot of people. Let's say 1 million, let's say 2 million, let's say 500,000 even. Okay. There's not enough of anything. There's not enough of anything for even a hundred thousand, 500,000 people. They're talking millions. So I, I get, you know, obviously that's everybody's dream, you know, to, to, to have millions and millions, of course. But this game has so much potential. I talk to so many people about it. I, I always bring it up. And, and like you say, you know, we are ambassadors of this. I, I have, I truly believe in the project. I love the project. Uh, I love the game. I love the community. I love from the, from the newest person that comes in all the way to the top. Uh, everyone's so welcoming and it's just a great, great community. That's why I love when, when WT makes those lists and I'm seeing the prices, I'm going, man, if I had a money tree, I'm telling you right now, man, I would just be buying everything because I, I feel like that everything's underrated, like under, undervalued. So like WT, what do you, what if you, okay. So what are your thoughts on the prices today compared to what we're going on in and say, cause everything's, uh, everything's been going crazy this week, right? At least the uh, epics and stuff, right? What's going on this week with the prices? Right. Uh, yeah. A couple days ago. Uh, the rumor is that Kratos Guild picked up a whole bunch of epic pets, possibly some rare pets, it looks like, and I think possibly some epic heroes because uh, those three categories were like the biggest jumps so far this week. And then we've seen other assets that were a little bit behind, like Cadmus, uh, your Lucius, and your uh, Selene, both catch up dramatically. Onyx went went ham mm -hmm. uh creos went ham Erska went ham just practically doubling if not more than doubling their price and i put out a little tidbit last night the quantity that is out on the market was insanely low and i i know that there's more of the uh, assets out there they're just not listed but that's kind of a, a mind-blowing number that the assets listed is like in all almost all cases under 30 and only one case stein that's was wild. like 41 and I, I already noticed, uh, I put that out and some other things, and like there were some more people that threw them out there trying to undercut some people, and the prices did right. retract a little bit, but right. they're still very high. And I, I put out the number, 250,000 people would bottleneck this, let it's alone, it's let alone crazy. 50 million. I agree, and that's why I don't, I, I, you know, it's, it's, I don't I don't know how this is going to happen. I don't know. I, I, to, everything, to me, everything is so, 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 so low right now. But I know Onyx, I mean, I remember a couple of weeks ago, uh, people were saying, yo, Onyx is just way too low. Onyx is, is, I'm surprised it's where it's at. And so, yeah, I'm not surprised to see it, uh, you know, absolutely skyrocket like that. So, yeah, speaking of, like, guilds picking things up and stuff. So there's going to be some competitive guilds, like uh, Kratos, they, they claim they're going to be the, the, the main one, the main competitor. Um, speaking of that, what are your plans for, say, O Canada? You have how many... 
How many um, tokens do you have? Do you have one that's going to be like main, maybe like a main focus? These are your hardcore players and you kind of have people that kind of just, they want to play. Do you have it where, you know, do you have to have pets? Can you play for free and join the guild? Because there's going to be so many rules, you know, obviously people are going to, or people in here to make money as well as play. So if you have people that aren't investing, does it slow down a guild a little bit to the point where it's like, hey, listen, I'm sorry. Uh, I need to have that spot for someone that is going to pull the weight for everybody else because everyone's going to be helping everybody else throughout the game. So you have to kind of look at it in a few different angles. You want to help people and say, hey, listen, you know, I'm the kind of guy that's like, I don't care, you know, how much you put into this. Come play with us. But at the same time, it's like, well, then you got all these other people saying, well, hey, this person, you know, they're not really pulling their weight. What about us? And you might upset the people that have invested. So there's going to be a tough balance with that. So uh, my basically my question to you is, do you have how many guilds are you planning on maybe running? Are you going to have it basically set where one is like your main, like the hardcore players that are there to go or, and, or are you just going to be more casual and whoever wants to join can join, uh, take it from there. Where's your, where's your uh, thoughts with your guilds and stuff or guild or guilds. All right. Well, I'll, I'll start by answering that first question that I never truly answered the Canadian identity. Sorry, my friend. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, but uh, it's cause it started small, but, but at the end of the day, um, it's not about where you live country-wise or Canada, eh? It's more of about your cultures, your value, um, that kind of thing. And that's what we want. We want people that identify with, you know, with sharing, with helping the community, um, with different values that, you know, uh, we're used to having as Canadian, you know, even right. Americans like WT, you know, it's a beauty. very close to us. They have similar <laughs> values as well. So it's, it's more, uh, and, and I thought it was important to have an identity because if not, I could just throw a random name out there, but what does it really mean? Mm -hmm. To me, it felt like if I had something that represented, uh, you know, my culture, uh, how I was brought up, whatever, then, then that would help. And, and yes, like people from other countries might say no because it's O Canada, mm -hmm. but they might also say yes because, well, that's a country I would love to live in. Or, you know, maybe it could be like Nick and his idol is Justin Bieber. Like, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, you know, we'll, we'll welcome everyone. And, it, and it's, it's really cool. I would say maybe uh, this is, is, is not uh, verified, but maybe 50% of our members are Canadian mm -hmm. and we have members from all over, all over the world. Obviously we have a lot of members from the Philippines. So shout out to our Filipino community. We just put a language channel in our discord mm -hmm. for them. Uh, we obviously have the French community. I mean, my first language is French personally, uh, more on the Quebec side of Canada. Uh, so we have people that identify to that, to that as well. Uh, so that's to answer your first question. Answering your second question is we're still building that structure, but what we're definitely looking towards having is having some top guild tiers mm -hmm. that will compete at the highest level. So not necessarily like esports per se, right? But we want to see our name at the top of the leaderboard beside Kratos and YGG and Pax Kustos and all of them. So yeah, we definitely want to have our our top our top dogs in there. And how could that look? Well, it could literally look like a competitive tier where, where you have my warrior guild at the top and then you have one, two, three, four adventure guilds. Mm -hmm. And then what we're doing right now is we're, we're giving points to players in our Discord for the active stuff they're doing in the community or if they're participating. Yeah. So that's one aspect. They get points for being active. And as we get closer to the game and we know what the NFTs are worth or what we think they're going to be worth in game or how useful they're going to be, we're going to give those points before the game comes out. And then we're literally going to have a ranking of everyone in our Discord. And if you scored the highest and you want to play competitive, we're going to throw you in the combat competitive nice. tier. And then that's basically us thinking or of how much they're going to perform when the game when the game launches. Everyone starts right. at zero. Right. Then it starts by how good do you perform in game, and then maybe after a month we'll do a, a hundred percent reshuffle to right. reshuffle where people did within a month. It's like okay, you're our top thirty top guys. You're going to give us the best chance of beating right up the top of the leaderboard. You're now part of the Warrior Guild. Mm -hmm. The next twenty, you're awesome. You're part of our first like 
top adventure right. kind of thing. Well, that's so, that, so that's that's one space only for the super super competitive because it's going to switch. You're going to go up and down. It's like it's like if in your hockey, if you're in hockey, if you're at the top, you're in the NHL. But if you drop, you're going to the CHL right, right. or the AHL or the. Well, that, that's the thing. You're going to have your you're going to have your grinders, and, and that's the thing is you want to you want to you know help the people that are they are grinding, putting the effort in. You want to put them together, help each other out, push that guild up. I, I think that's a good way to do it. And how many guilds are you planning on having? Um, so right now, uh, our members we have uh, I don't know about ten guild tokens in all wow. in, in our members, and obviously we're looking anyone that wants to join us with a guild token as well, or as soon as they release more, and yes, they will release more. Yeah, of course they yeah. will at some point. They have to. Uh, have to. We'll, we'll definitely buy more. No. But our our second tier, uh, just to explain, so we're not fully just competitive. I, I want people to know that. Um, I mean, our mission is to onboard all Canadian mobile RPG gamers. Nice. So with a mission like that, you need space for other types of players. Um, so we're gearing to, to three groups, super competitive, that will be playing all their energy every day that have top assets. Then we have another tier where it'll be more, I would call them dedicated players, where they will play every day. They'll do the minimum challenges every day. They might not spend all their energy. They might not have the top NFTs. Right. They might even be free to play. Right. And then we have the casual players, which at this moment, we have no plan to put them in guilds because they might just play once in a while. They just play for the fun right. or they want to be part of the community. We. You probably can't count on them to contribute cubelets all the time to the guild or whatever. But down the road, as more guilds free up, we may be able to put some of these casual players in a guild as well. And it gets them used to the game. They get access to the same content that everyone would get. They get right. peer support. They get community support. And if they decide they want to play more, then they're ready to go. And then once the spots freeze up, boom. Put him in. He already knows how we work. He already knows what's going on. Right. So that's how I see our O Canada A that is more community uh, and it's more an umbrella. And in our uh, community, we have different guild tokens that will all assign spots together so that there's no competing. It's not like for sure, it's a team people not have right. tokens. They're, they're not all recruiting in O Canada. No, right, we're partnering right, right. up with them. We're putting a system to place people in guilds. And then we're all going to share strategies after right. that. So that's how I see it. Right. Now, before I get too off topic, I just got to say something, man. Can you guys both show your sweaters? Look at this. Can you both show your sweaters? How is this, man? Guys, guys, yo, uh, hey, uh, Guild of Guardians, just wanna t I just want to say something here, guys. What's, what's, what's different here, guys? We got these two beautiful sweaters, and then I'm wearing this. I mean, it's a nice sweater, but it's, you know, can we, you know, is there a way to do so? How do we do, what, how does this work? How do I get one of these? You know, I'm just going to throw it out there. If, if one accidentally gets shipped to my, my house somehow, I don't know. I don't know, just by magic, I don't know. Uh, that'd be nice because, man, look at this, man. They got these two beautiful sweaters. I'm stuck here with this. I mean, it's not a bad sweater, but uh, I just want to say, man, those things are awesome. I love those. And I, if I had one, I, you'd have to literally rip it off my body. I would never take it off. Uh, absolutely <laughs> love them. So, um, yeah, so I, that's, that's a really good explanation on the guilds and stuff. And I know um, there's this thing going on with Sandbox. I know you built an amazing – so here's the thing. So so Tom Mox built this amazing level in in Sandbox. Uh, WT, have you got a chance to play it? or Because I, I know WT plays Sandbox as well. I've dabbled in it a bit. I've actually played Tomox levels. They're they're phenomenal. They're at, like legit. They're phenomenal. I've actually streamed it on my stream. Um, maybe I can put a link to the VOD or something, and you can watch it there. Uh, where I, I went through the maze. There was a maze one I did. I did the zombie one as well. WT, have you uh, had a chance to dabble in Sandbox? And uh, what do you think? Uh, yeah, yeah. I've, I've checked out Tomhawks a little bit and some other ones out there, and I've done a little bit of Voxel. Uh, tinkering around myself with the game maker program i haven't had a whole lot of time to dedicate it because i've got a few other things going on mm -hmm. but uh, overall the sandbox is going to be a monster tomahawk can see it uh yeah well fun fact tomahawk and i were in the very first uh teaching class of boot how camp. to yeah mm -hmm. the sandbox boot camp and I didn't even know he was going to be in there. And then he was talking about Guild of Guardians. I was like, oh, someone else is in here from Guild of Guardians. <laughs> and, uh, you know, hats off to him. That What he's done so far has been amazing. And the the one that I've seen was just the pre preliminary one. So mm -hmm. I can only assume he's gotten much better because the more you play with it, the better you get. And it's a 
fantastic tool. You can gang make, you can be an artist. It's fantastic for marketing alone. People mm -hmm. overlook the marketing value that that game has. And you can also play and earn in it eventually. And just a great ecosystem. And uh, hats off for you, to you, Tom Hawk, for getting involved with that and creating whatever it is that you're creating. Yeah, I agree. I've, I've, like I said, I've played the levels. They're, they're actually really, 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 really good. I'm not just saying that. They're absolutely phenomenal. Uh, maybe what we can do when uh, the, uh, you know, by the end of this video, we can see because the, the, the problem with sandbox is you can't search specific levels so you have to kind of you know know what page it's on and, and what we can do is maybe I'll, we'll find out what page it's on at the end of this video i can put that in the description below and honestly guys if you play sandbox it's a free download game you can download it it's gilded guardians based it's phenomenal and uh and, and try it out and check it out it, it's a really really well done like he literally designed this these these games that you can play it's a free download jump on it it's it's unbelievable very 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 fun i'll be playing it again i'll be doing it on stream again uh, but yeah, Thomas, so what's your inspiration? Tell me what got you started on this. Like, talk to me about your sandbox uh, levels and stuff. Let's hear it. Awesome. Um, so my first NFT project that I ever researched, I was looking, I only got into crypto around this time or a little later uh, last year, so March or so. Uh, and I got into blockchain too and whatever. So I started with the Bitcoin, Ethereum and uh, I didn't really know what I was doing, but then I started to research the actual technology and I was like, okay, digital assets, you get to own ownerships of those dig digital assets. And that took me right to gaming with my gaming, you know, experience background. I'm like, this is going to change gaming. And I, I told that to myself before even knowing mm -hmm. that there was such thing, such a thing as a NFT gaming, blockchain gaming, play to earn, play and earn. Yep. So then I was like, well, this is obviously the future. There must be a game out there I can play. So I did a search. I was like, okay, there's Axie Infinity. Mm -hmm. And there's, you know, a couple other games coming. But there was nothing that appealed to me as a gamer. And then I, I, I stumbled up, uh, across GOG. And I was like, okay, this is exactly what I would play. I'm not in a gaming style right now where I play console or PC or whatever. I'm more of a mobile, a minute here, minute there when I have time. Uh, I, I like playing. So that was perfect. RPG, I love RPGs. Yep. So that was ideal. And then, and then I actually thought I was too late because they had given away some rare heroes or something to be on the wait list. So I wasn't mm -hmm. one of the first 100,000 people on the wait list. So right. I thought I was actually too late for this project. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, I just followed the Discord and it was like, oh, their first sale is coming up. Their first sale ever. So I'm not too late. So nice. then I got, that was the first time I ever bought assets. I, I bought three legendaries and the guild token. So I ended up with two Leas and a Rufus. Nice. And then, and then how did that link to the Sandbox? Is because I saw the partnership with the Sandbox. I had no clue what Sandbox was. Wow. I saw they had a partnership. If you got one of these heroes, you could get the same in the Sandbox. I'm like, oh, I'll go see what the Sandbox is. <laughs> and then I started researching that. Yeah. And to me, my first thing when I saw it, uh, it was like, okay, so this is a mix of Minecraft and Roblox. Mm -hmm. But with the concepts of digital assets Absolutely. on the blockchain and anyone can download the creator and create a game anyone can create assets that are nfts to put into their game mm -hmm. and you can buy land you can publish your experience and you can come have people visit it yeah i so, think so i put sorry go ahead sorry yeah. go ahead go ahead I, I put two and two together i was like all right i'm going to take my sandbox land because I bought a land following that. And I'm like, I'm going to build something GOG related, which the idea, the, the vision is a social hub. I want a social hub where everybody that plays GOG can come into this world that I'm creating and you know they can play together, party, whatever. There, there'll be a stage, let's say, Gilda Gardens, Nick or Derek have an MAA or Josiah. They can pop their avatar on stage and we're all like, with our avatars, mm -hmm. like listening to them on stage or dancing on the dance floor, or a couple of us will have access to the VIP section. Mm -hmm. So then you'll be able to see which avatar, which people are VIPs. And there'll be little challenges going on in there as well, different worlds to visit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so I just saw the vision as clear as day. And I was like, all right, 
And then I saw this boot camp because I didn't know how the hell to build. I have no game making experience, no development experience at all. Zero, zero. Which blows I'm a coder. I'm not nothing. At which blows all. my yeah, mind able. because if you see this level, you see these levels, they're, they're like so, they look professionally done. Like I'm blown away that uh, that you like. For instance, my uh, I my I have the sandbox game. I downloaded it. My kids, you know, they they mess around on it, but they just like you know put everything all over the place. But it's like if you know what you're doing, or if you have some, if you just sit there and you figure it out and you actually put the time in, uh, man, the things you can make. Like I'm telling you, you guys have to check this level out. It's or, there's two of them. You have to check them out. They're absolutely phenomenal. Uh, but yeah, sorry, I didn't want to interrupt you there. I just had to, I want to say like it's just I, I'm blown away that you said you had zero experience because uh, from what I saw, it was just it's like you've been doing this for years so didn't mean to cut you off there but i just yeah i wanted to say it looked beautiful sorry go ahead but yeah so and, and the other thing i wanted to say about it before it before i say anything else is um uh, like i like how you said you want it to be like a hub like a like a social hub i think that's where a lot of this metaverse stuff is 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 aiming and going towards it's like listen you can hang out have your avatars that's why to me i think profile pictures are huge it's a new identity in the metaverse like we use you know when you have like you know whatever instagram whatever you use your pro facebook whatever you use your 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 face right you use your picture whatever now a lot of people are using profile pictures but the metaverse is like your another identity that's who you are in the metaverse and all this stuff so your profile pictures you know what games you're representing or what clubs you're representing whatever it is i think it's huge so i like the fact that you're saying yes you want to build a hub where everyone can just kind of jump in and just kind of hang out and get to know each other and you're hanging out in the metaverse you have your avatars or your skins or whatever you have and you just kind of hang out you have your dance parties whatever you say meetings uh, um, amas or you know podcasts whatever it is i think that's cool i think that's more interactive everyone's there kind of like it's like you're in the in the stadium or in the in the theater watching the podcast live i like that stuff so i, I you know hats off to you and i think uh, i think your vision and where you're going with it is is the right track and uh, again, like like we've talked earlier, we're all ambassadors. The three of us, we all love Guild of Guardians, and we want to see it succeed. And and it's things like that that really set it apart and kind of like build the community because communities are everything in this stuff. You know, if you have the right community, it really helps. And and from what I've seen so far, I've met so many amazing people and so many new friends through Guild of Guardians, and I absolutely love the community. Everyone seems positive. Everyone's pulling for it. The ambassadors are doing a great job. Everyone's doing a great job. And it's just, uh, you know, I, I can't wait to see what happens in the future uh, with everything. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Sorry, I didn't want to interrupt you on your on your thing. I know, uh, you know, you're really excited about it. I'm really excited about it. But, yeah, if there's anything else you wanted to say about the sandbox, you could just keep going. I, just, I had to throw that in there. No, I mean, I don't want to say too much. I'm working on a lot of stuff in the background. Um, yeah. Nice. Uh, can't wait. In, in, the, in the coming weeks, it's, you know. I'm trying to get something going, and if it goes how how do how I want it to go, then at some point we'll be able to have a big reveal for what I'm building. Nice. That's why I don't necessarily want to promote too much people going into what I'm building right now because it's not fully complete. Got it. So I want really to when when I mean it is testable now, but that's what I would say it's, it's the stage it's it's at. It's at a testing stage where there's a few bugs still, and we need to right. work out. But when it's where I want it to be in the next few weeks and uh, we can have something more uh, of a launch of some kind, then, yeah, keep your nice. eyes out for that. Uh, WT, nice. do, you, do you have any of those skins on uh, in uh, Sandbox, WT? The GOG uh, skins? No, they haven't, they haven't released those yet. And uh, a little clarification. Uh, I talked to Derek a long time ago because I was going to buy more Varric, more Leah, or uh, more Myra to have a better chance at getting those in the sandbox. And from my understanding, that doesn't work that way. It's if you bought them on the founder's sale, that's when your ticket was locked in. So Got just it. a little tidbit for uh, people out there. And uh, I didn't get a chance to say it before. It's my favorite uh, guild name out there, O Canada A. It makes me smile every time I hear it's it. It's amazing. I, I, I think it's that earlier. I think it's amazing. I love it. I love it. Uh, yeah, I, I think it's great. I think it's great. So. Do you think you're going to have, uh, like, any of the guilds, do you think it's going to be, do you, they're all going to be, are they all going to be basically, basically called O Canada A, like, one, two, three, four, or, like, how is that going to work? How you, how do you plan on, like? That's, uh, that's in the details. Uh, I'll have to talk to yourself and the other officers. I mean, we must be getting close to 20 officers, mm -hmm. because I'm gearing up, because we're going to need people to lead these guilds, and people that have gaming experience, people... Right. 
that have different types of background. I mean, you're, you're a streamer, so you can help with content creation in that way. In advertising, we have other people that, you know, have like 150 Axie scholars. Like we have people, really, really quality people in our group of leadership. Um, so we're going to decide with them um, how, which way we want to go. Right. Do we want O Canada 1, 2, 3? Do we want to name them, name them different provinces? Do we want to <laughs> name them different cities? You know, it, it depends, right? <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you brought up scholarships, actually, because I'm actually meant to ask that earlier and I totally forgot. Um, do you have a plan for that? Like, do you plan on doing scholarships? Is that, is, is that something on the table? Is it not on the table? Is it something you want to do? You, you're you kind of trying to avoid it. Um, what are your thoughts on the scholarships? And are you planning on doing something like that? Um, so I understand why scholarships work really well for some of the current games that are out because the barrier for entry is so high uh, or it's high enough that a lot of people can't get into the game. Uh, is there a place for scholarships in GOG? Well, technically, the barrier to enter is zero. It's a free-to-play game. Mm -hmm. um, but if you have characters, you're going to get a boost at the start for sure. Yeah. So a, a scholarship or renting program where you can rent out, let's say, your assets could work in that sense to give a boost. Um, Personally, O Canada A, we're not interested in that at all. Uh, what we're saying, we're going for the mass onboarding. We're saying, come in with whatever you have, whatever you can afford. If it's zero, it's zero. Right. Wherever you, whatever you come up, uh, come in with, we're going to give you the tools and everything you need. The tutorials, if you're starting from scratch, what is the best strategy to get? you know, to the next level for you and how to reinvest in a smart way to increase uh, kind of how good or how well you can perform in a game. So come in, whatever you have, and we'll work with you uh, with that. So at the end of the day, I just like the idea of people owning everything they have, especially if there's no need to have mm -hmm. better assets. That's just how I see it because right. it's a free to play. Uh, but but I'm not against at all any renting strategy. Um, and, you know, even myself, anyone personally will be able to rent assets to others. So we don't even know how that's going to work. Mm -hmm. And GOG said that it would be a third party that would build right. these kind of applications. Right. But let's say I, we have someone in the guild that's stuck at this level. And what he needs is a top healer to pass that level. If there was an opportunity to, you know, rent him or let him use one of your top healers for one dungeon, then that could be cool to give him a boost. I don't know if that's something that's doable. I have no clue, but I could see that being helpful for some people as long as it doesn't, you know, become kind of pay to win kind of style the, where you can just f trade them around. Right, and right, stuff. right. Just kind of, yeah, I, no, I, I see what you're saying. So one thing I see too, and, and here's the thing, I know a lot of people look at this because it is a play and earn game. And a lot of people, I think, look, and I, I agree. I'm not, I'm not big into the, the scholarship my th thing myself, but I agree. It's like uh, where people think it's like, you know, um, but what if someone likes the game and they just want to play? They don't care about the earning aspect. Because here's the thing where, where, you know, we always look at this as a play to earn thing and we think of the money side of it, right? Where what if this game is just so good that someone just wants to get, like play and get ahead? They don't care about the earnings. They're just like, listen, I need some heroes because I want to play. I don't really care what I make from it. You can keep everything for all I care. I just want to play the game and get deeper and, and use better heroes. So I think there's like, I think there's, you know, possibilities for that now. I don't know if they would, you know, but that's the thing. It's like, hey, listen, this is a, you know, whatever. I don't know, a, a $1,500 hero. You can use it if you want, if you really want to play the game and do that end game, you know, content. Uh, but yeah, sure. I'll take the, I'll take the loot. If you don't care about the money, pass it all to me. Go ahead. Knock yourself off. Have some fun. I think there's possibilities like that, but I agree. I don't, I don't know how much of a sedalian or a scholarship program, whatever it's being called, uh, it is because it is a free to play game. And they keep saying over and over, it is free to play. And you're going to be able to do the content. If you just play, they're going to, you're going to unlock heroes. You're going to unlock things. Yes. You're not going to be the top of the top, but if you want to just play the game and have fun, the opportunities there, and that's what I love. I love the fact that they want uh, a big player base, and uh, and they're saying, "Listen, guys," and they're very clear about it. You can play for free. Just you're, we're going to give you everything you need along the way. It might be a little harder, but you'll be fine. You'll be able to do it. I like that. So yeah, I don't know how important the uh, the scholarship program is, um, to be honest. And, and I, I kind of like that. I kind of like that. It's 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 that it's that way. Wt, what are your thoughts on on the on the on the whole thing there? 
And you just you just solved the massive problem. I don't think you realized it with what you just said. I mean, there's a lot of hatred out there for this space from the traditional gamers, and you just solved it. They you like the game, come and play it. We'll hook you up and we'll take all the money. You don't have to worry about the money that you hate so much, so right. we can help you out and you can help us out. So I think you solved the problem there, buddy. <laughs> I'm a problem solver, man. What can I say? <laughs> <laughs> what can I say? But that's what I mean. It's like, because that's the problem. When people think of play to earn, they immediately think of the money side and they don't look at the game itself. And I think the game, I, listen, from what I've seen, I, I'm hooked. I love this stuff. I love the dungeon crawling. We've gone over this. I love that stuff. And the fact that the play to earn is there. Now, for me, uh, I, I love this stuff. I think it's it's the future. We talked about this as well, where I think play to earn or play and earn, which I love that, by the way, that's very smart. Uh, I think that's the way. And I think a lot of companies are starting to figure that out now. And they're like, whoa, whoa we need to get in on this. And, uh, and, and a lot of people are saying 2022 is the year of you know, play to earn, play and earn. But these, some of these games have lagged behind. And, and the one thing I've always learned in life is you either keep, you know, people are like, they're like, oh, they don't like NFTs or they don't like play to earn. And the one thing I've learned in life is, you know, either keep up or get left behind. And you know what? NFTs and crypto are here to stay. If people like it or not, they can keep up with it. They can get uh, information. They can get educated on it, or they could stay and say, you know what? I don't, I don't want to learn it. And they're going to get left behind. And that's just the way it is. Just like when horses were around and the cars started coming out and people were saying, ah, you know, I don't want those things. I'm going to ride my horse. Well, guess what? You know, you're not riding your horse on the highway today. You know what I mean? So it's like, you just got to either keep up or get left behind. And, uh, and I think uh, this is going to be a huge year uh, for a lot of these companies, a lot of these games, and especially GOG. And, and uh, I'm in their corner 150%, and uh, I'm just super excited. I'm super excited. Um, is there anything else you guys wanted to bring up? Uh, WT, is there anything you wanted to talk about, bring up, mention? Did I forget anything? Did I miss anything? Uh, what's new and exciting this week? Let's talk about what happened this week. Let's talk about what happened this week. Uh, go for it, buddy. All right. Well, real quick, uh, Tomahawk. I, I like what you said about your hierarchy setup, and you really gave a lot of nuts and bolts to what you're actually doing as a guild organization. And I, I think that's amazing. I'm going to be going back and taking notes on everything you said because I'm not sure what I'm going to be doing with my guilds, but you, like, you've given me some ideas now. And for anybody that's looking for a guild, I would seriously look at this guild because he's actually got a laid out plan ready to go, and it lets you know what they're doing and I, I like it hats off to you about that uh as yep. far as uh what's going on in gilded guardians i mean we had senior moderators promoted it was who i thought it was going to be bosley baird kenjiro step fam and gray i figured that those would be the top candidates to get it and they all got it so i'm not surprised uh, we got 12 new moderators that popped up that's absolutely amazing it's it's desperately needed they're probably going to need more down the road yeah uh Big contest going right now, Chinese New Year. You make something revolving uh, around Chinese New Year, Guild of Guardians, and you put it up on their Twitter, and they've got some fabulous prizes going out to five different people. Roughly 3,400-ish GOG tokens is on the line. That's, That's nothing to sneeze at because those are super undervalued right now. Agreed. And uh, they got a big virtual event coming up on Wednesday with Immutable X. Derek Lau is going to be there, several other key speakers. It's, I think it's going for like an hour and a half. It's 6 to 7.30 GMT time plus 11. I got to look that up. I don't know what that is, plus 11. That threw me off. <laughs> I don't know what time it's at, but it's on Wednesday, February 2nd. I'm I think slow. it was, uh, I think I looked it up and it was 2 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Oh, that's but perfect. I'll just be ending my stream. That's perfect. <laughs> That's perfect. I'm getting up for it. <laughs> I'll be ending my stream right then. I get off of my stream and start listening to that. That's perfect for me. I love it. I love it. <laughs> That's pretty much uh, the week. It was a little bit slower week. Yep. And I tell you what, from past experience, we're in a lull right now. That is usually like a buildup. Oh, something's coming, I think. Uh, just don't know when. Agree. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Because here's the thing with with any, especially we're so early right now. You, you there can't be news every day, right? There's got to be something comes out. People get hyped. They're excited. We talk about it, and then obviously they're working on the next. There's a lot of things going on. A lot of moving parts. A lot of you know things that are getting added. They're reviewing. They're looking at. They're whatever you know tweaking. So it's like you know we get an announcement. You're not going to get something every day. It's it's not realistic. So an announcement comes. People get hyped, and then they work on the next thing. So there's is that lull area. But then guess what? You know it could be this week. Could be next week. Could be whatever. Maybe on Wednesday we hear something that we we're going to learn. Uh, you know on that uh, on that virtual uh, meeting that maybe there's something big in the works that we just don't know about. So yeah, I'm super excited. I agree. I think there's nothing too too much. 
this week. Um, but, uh, you know, it was always good to just chat and, and, and you know, we, we, we catch up with each other and it's really, really cool to hear about O Canada. A, I'm very active in the Discord as well. And I think they're an absolutely great group, guys. Don't sleep on it. I'll put the link, uh, we'll put the link below in the, in the description for, uh, if anybody wants to join the Discord and stuff or have any questions, leave comments below. Uh, you know, we're always answering all the, all the replies in the comments below. We're always answering them. So yeah, don't be shy. If you have any questions, you know, you can either, uh, leave a comment below. Uh, going to the Discord itself and ask the questions there. There's there's lots of information. But yeah, nothing really too crazy this week, huh? Nothing too crazy? There Just... was uh, one last thing I forgot. Uh, a GOG Academy is working with Gilded Guardians to do the Guardian of the Week from now on. So shout mm -hmm. out to him. And Boz Lee was the feature this week. Pretty cool article. Some good stuff about him. Gives a little bit of backstory about people in community. I liked it. Yeah, I, I think it's amazing. I love that they do that. I think it's great. Again, community is everything. They're they're all about community. We're all about community. Everyone's about community. And uh, I can't say it enough. I think they're doing a phenomenal, phenomenal job. And man, the future. I'm telling you, the future is going to be awesome with this. I'm really, really, really excited. Um, Tomahawk, anything you want to say on the way out? Yes. Uh, can we do a giveaway for my first ever appearance on any type of stream? Beauty. podcast anything there you go what would you like to do how do you want to do it you you take the reins right here what do you want to do all right well i'm i like giving undervalued stuff because those are the ones that are going to raise the most uh, or whatever and those mm -hmm. are the ones i was able to buy the most so let's give out a common pet Beauty. of the of the choosing of the winner uh, i would say once you tweet out this video if they can simply retweet, follow Bruno, myself, Tomahawk, follow WT, like, like, retweet, follow us, and that gives you a chance. I like it. I like it. Cool. Done. You heard it here first, guys. So if you've made it this deep in the video, you know, you know what to do to win this pet. Now, I'm going to say this again. We talk about this all the time. Pets are so undervalued. Um, you can't get them in the game from what we understand right now. There's clearly not nearly enough of them to go around, and uh, that is amazing. So, yeah, there you go. So, you heard it here first. Uh, retweet, like, follow myself, Tomahawk, WT, and, uh, yeah, and you can get the uh, – and you can get a chance. Awesome. That is awesome. I love that. So, uh, thank you very much, Tomahawk. I got to say thank you so much, man, for being here. That was uh, – it's always good chatting with you. I mean, he's, he's a great guy. And like I said, he lives down the road. I could probably hit his house with a rock from here, you know? That's that's amazing. If and W if it wasn't for COVID, Bruno, we would have, you know, met so many times. Oh, hundred percent. Hundred percent. You'd be yeah. sick of me by now. You'd be you'd be like, stop calling me. Leave me alone. <laughs> I'm not I'm busy we today. Together and have some uh, Guild of Guardian network parties or something. Oh, it's gonna be awesome. It honestly yeah, man, it'd be good. Summer. Yeah. Oh yeah. Once it's things summer, clear up, we'll definitely invite it. Oh yeah. I guess WT, but in in real life <laughs> event, O Canada A, I got the spot. I already have the cook. Nice. And, oh, yeah. And we're we're getting ready. So nice. WT can come down on his private jet. He's got one of those here real soon, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. I love it. All right, guys. Uh, WT, anything you want to close up? Say anything you got to say. Get it off your chest. Let's hear it, baby. What you got? Awesome. This is absolutely awesome. I loved your insight on the uh, what you're doing inside mm -hmm. the guild. It really helped me out, honestly. So thanks for the information and uh, sharing. It was great. Yeah. Agreed. hundred percent. I think I love what you're building. Um, you know, I just, I love it. I think it's great. You're a good leader. You can tell you're a good leader. You have your vision, you know what you want, your goals, and you're going there. And I love that. Uh, very, very good. You're not, you know, you're not into drama. I love that. You're just, this is what we're going for. This is our build. That's what it's about. And, uh, very, 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 very good. I'm really, really into that. So awesome. All right. Well, let's say our goodbyes then, guys. That was a lot of fun. I mean, we got to get you on again sometime. That was great. Just love chatting. Maybe we'll do like a, an update on how everything's going where, you know, uh, We'll get you back sometime for sure, man. That was really, 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 really fun. Um, and yeah, so WT, I know you, your your schedule might be crazy in the upcoming bit, but we're gonna work around. We're gonna make things work, baby. Don't don't worry about it. Yeah, we're gonna make things a backup plan. You got it. You got it. I love it. All right, guys, if you've made it this far, thank you so much. Uh, you know what to do. Hit that like button. Leave a comment below. Let us know your thoughts. Uh, you know, let us know what you think of the video. It's always good to get that feedback. And again, I'll put the Discord link to uh, O Canada A in the description below. I'll put all of our socials. So yeah, Tom Ock, send me your socials. I'll put them all in the description below. And there's a giveaway. Uh, Tom Ock told you how to uh, to 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 win the the prize. He's gonna hook you up. And uh, yeah, that was a great 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 chat, guys. I really really appreciate talking with you guys. And I will see you guys next week. I'm out of here, you beauties. Talk to you soon. Peace out. Peace.